Uh, so, hi, my name is Mikael Nelson, uh, working at the uh, Telia company. I'm the uh, product owner for uh, what we call API publishing. Uh, I come from an agile background, uh, so I've been working as a scrum master and agile coach, uh, trying to help teams to become agile. And one thing that's always been like a problem becoming agile is the what's called the technical part of agile. So the, technical part of agile is ci cd things that helps the teams to actually become faster uh, and one of the things that i've been seeing that's missing is some way to easily share uh, what you've been doing and also consume what others have been doing uh, and for me apis is the, that perfect spot of how can you you know work fast and still share and consume other services in, in a good manner. So I think APIs is a really good thing to have uh, in, in a company in a good way when, when you come becoming agile. So how did we start with this API uh, initiative at all? Uh, so I was working with integrations. All big companies has integrations, traditional integrations. Uh, so we said, okay, let's uh, let's set up an API platform because that was requested by uh, projects. So we selected a platform as we normally do, and uh, you know, evaluated a few. And uh, luckily enough, we were uh, uh, so smart. So we selected Apigee's uh, SaaS hosted solution, and uh, that uh, was a uh, yeah. It will. Later on, it's, it's seen that that was a really good choice, uh, for us at least. Uh, so we selected that, installed that, and then we said that, okay, now we can do APIs. And we did as we had done before, that uh, we had a team and they started to develop these APIs that were requested by uh, projects. Uh, it was very successful and uh, we started to build APIs. Uh, looking back, I wouldn't say we build APIs. I would say that we built integrations over <laughs> APIs. So, so no real API thinking there. Uh, but it was very successful and it went very well. Uh, so the, uh, uh, the requests came in more and more and we had to hire more developers. Uh, and we suddenly saw that, well, this is not going to work out because the team would be like 70 developers or something. So we said, okay, we need to do something about this. How, how can we scale this in a better way? Uh, so we said, okay, let's switch model and actually try to uh, scale this by saying that, okay, we provide the platform and then we onboard teams and they develop their own APIs. Uh, let's try that and see how that works. So we then changed our vision in what we think that how this should be done. So we said that we believe that the future belongs to small independent teams. And independent teams uh, need a really easy and automated way to create and consume services. So we provide a platform for building, managing, and sharing APIs. And so we're actually shifting from building to our new target, which was then to actually onboard teams. So we said, okay, let's onboard as many teams as possible. Uh, not super easy, because that was a shift in, in how we work. Uh, but I think the first step that made uh, this go through was that we said, okay, we take all costs for the API platforms, for you know, running the APIs, everything, so you don't have to pay anything of the, you know, what Apigee costs. We'll take care of that. And then it was much more interesting for everyone because then they didn't have to, you know, sort out finance or anything. So that was a, a big step forward. Uh, then we said, okay, how can we make this even easier? And then we started looking at, okay, things that needs to be done several times. So for example, firewall openings. Uh, every team that wanted an API needed to work with firewalls and you know open up between whatever they were going to and from. So we said that if we manage to provide like a open firewalls in this way and you can do it over and over again and it's super simple, that would be something that teams really 
produce. So we did that, and that that was uh, also something which were like, oh, now it's super easy. Now we can you know develop so much faster. Uh, last big thing we did was that we started to do uh, education of developers. So we put up like uh, tutorials and trainings on how does Apigee work, how does, does it work, how do you create uh, APIs, what to think, and so on. Uh, we did a few of those and helped the, uh, the developers to start develop. And uh, what we could see that then is that the fastest so far is that from onboarding until they actually had the deployed API is one week. So it seems that it's rather simple and uh, it's working uh, and we see a lot of teams coming in. So it feels like the model is still working. Uh, so we are now a central team uh, trying to provide the platform for others to build on. Uh, but now we're coming to this part where, okay, we need to uh, do more. And the uh, next level that we see that we need to do is start to educate the rest of the company. What is APIs? How does they, that work? How should they think? Because uh, it's, uh, it's not just only developers using APIs now, it's more people. So if we look at that, I, I think we need to talk about the API economy. And if you like search the internet, you read some reports and everything, I mean, there's billions of value to be made here, right? Uh, and if you look at those reports, it's more or less like, okay, yeah, sure. You, you set up your API and you start, you know, money starts pouring in. Uh, but I would say it's not that super simple of a product. And often the business cases are complex and we often, we're part of an ecosystem, right? Where, where we have indirect revenue. So how to take part of that. Uh, so going through this with the, the business, for example, uh, you can always start with the one-to-one -one relation where it's a, a simple case uh, for an API. Uh, and for us, the, I mean, the simplest one is the messaging, uh, the text messaging. So you, you have an API, you send in, this is what we would like to send to these subscribers. And we send that to the subscribers as we have that infrastructure. Uh, and that's very straightforward. You know, you, you have a flat fee for every message that you send. You, you pay this amount of, of money. Uh, but there are a few problems with this. It's, it's hard to find those simple cases. There is not that many. And they're also super easy to copy. So if anyone else are able to send messages, well, they can just copy what we have, you know, lower the price, and then suddenly they are doing it better. So, so it's, it's hard to become you know, a superpower in that uh, area because it's so easy for anyone else. Instead, I think you need to start thinking about, okay, what, what's bringing value? And for me, smoothness brings value. So if you look at yourself uh, and maybe most of all your mobile phones where you have a lot of APIs in the background, what you would like to have thing, you press one button and there's a million things happening, you know, which you don't even see. And when that happens, you're providing a lot of value to the customer. So if you think of, you know, the traditional taxi app or something, you know, you, you press your button on your phone, like boom, and you have a taxi coming up and saying, okay, where do you want to go? Uh, and that's smoothness because you have one click and a lot of things happen. But in the background, there's, you know, Someone is taking the location, you have the maps coming up, you're talking to a cab, like which cab should we have, which route should we go, because depending on where you go, uh, you have some sort of payment integration. Uh, and all of this brings them value because it's so easy. You, you don't need to have like several apps and then handle payments in a separate app and everything. So it's really, really good. But there's also things to think about there. I mean, it's easy to say like, okay, now we know so much. Now we should help the user in all kind of ways. But when are you starting to do too much? If you take the taxi app we just talked about, for example, uh, when I'm done with my ride in the app, I suddenly now 
I know that, okay, you're at this location. So when I go there, should I then receive ads from that location saying, oh, well, you went to the mall. Here are some good commercials from the mall today. And that's a hard, hard line there. Some people will say, yeah, great. Others will say, oh, no, I don't want that. How could you know that I'm here? And it also depends on, on your mood. Like, what are you doing? So if I'm going for lunch, well, maybe it's a great thing that I get a commercial like from a restaurant saying, come try our new burgers. They're great. Then I would be like, wow, how did they know? I, this is great. And if I'm not and I get commercials to buy socks, well, then I would say, no, I don't want this. This is just annoying. So that's something to actually consider uh, and not doing too much. You, you, it's really tricky here. When, when are you like providing smoothness and when are you doing too much? Uh, so maximizing revenue is maybe not always like the super best thing to do, even if you can. Uh, and, and I think a good example is Facebook. So if I looked at my, I looked at my uh, flow there and I saw the 10 last posts and out of those, there were two posts which were for me relevant. The rest were like just commercials, people sharing news articles and stuff. And, and all of that was done over APIs, of course. But instead of you know, providing value, so I think Facebook is a great app, they you know, distract me. So I don't think Facebook is a great app anymore. It's annoying to use it. Uh, so that's something to consider. And that's something we need to train business on. What should they be doing? Uh, next thing to think about, I think, is business case. Uh, business case is not, if you have the one-to-one, -one, well, it's super easy, then you, you know exactly. But in most cases, it's, it's not that simple. If you look at us, for example, what we provide, we have an API. So if you're a, a big or a medium company, you can actually start ordering your own services from us. So you can order your phone, you can order a subscription, you can do top-ups, you can order device as a service, for example. Uh, and it's even possible to do revenue share with, with, with other companies. Uh, but how do you build that business case? So are we kind of getting new customers because we have this API? Or are we getting customers that we would have lost because they would they are desperately looking for an API to do this over. Uh, what, what's the case here? What, what should we do? Would we lose these customers if we don't have an API? So how do you really value like the, the money coming in? How, how do you say that, where do, where do they go? So th that's often something to really consider. And if you then think of what the even more complex business case where you have an ecosystem uh, where if you look at the taxi app say that we're providing one part of that if the taxi app is not successful well then we're not making any money either but if it's successful and very successful well then we started making a lot to become part of an ecosystem you might have to build a few apis put them out there and hope that someone picks them up and that they are successful. So it's not that straightforward of a business case building either. And that's something we need to explain and uh, teach people that how is this whole economy working? And then we're often talking about product APIs, uh, but that's not also you know, super straightforward for people not working with APIs. So we need to teach them that this is not a project, this is a product we're building. So you need to plan to have a team to actually support this long time. So the new customer is actually not maybe the end customer because we might not even touch the end customer. Our customer might be a developer and that's something else than a user buying a phone uh, at the store. And developers, they want activity. They want to know that this API is going to be there and it's working. And we all know that version one of an API might not be the, the best version of the, the API. Uh, so we need to iterate. And maybe after 
a few iterations, we actually come up with new business cases and see new things that we can actually provide with this API. So there's a lot of those things that you, we need to educate the rest of the company with. That's, that's maybe not target for developers to, to think about these things. So if we look at uh, where we are today, uh, we want to be uh, the place to be. Uh, so we want you to select what is best for you. Uh, so we don't tr do as you know traditionally done in a big company that we say, okay, now we have an API solution. If you're working with APIs, you go here and you use this because that's the, the rules and that's decided. Uh, we want to be there if you need us. So if you feel that our solution is good, use it. Uh, and we have also already from the start said that, well, there will be several platforms. So if you look at the big ones like AWS, Azure, uh, Google, you know, depending on where you have your microservices and other things, it might make sense to also have your API in AWS, for example. And then we need to make sure that, okay, fine, you can be on AWS, but how can you still take part of as much as possible of what we do even though you're on another uh, API platform. So we've been thinking like that from the start and, and that really helps out uh, and you design your solution in a better way, I think. Uh, and we're also thinking about how to find our weaknesses. So we don't see it as a problem when someone says, well, we're, we need to be on AWS because of this. Then we try to fix that and say, okay, so for that reason, you need to be on AWS. How can we make that available in our platform as well? So we're always building you know, new features. So that's a, a great way for us to, to see this is how we become better. And when you set up uh, an API uh, program, I think the, the part which no developers are really thinking about is the marketplace or the developer portal. Uh, so what we have done is we've set up uh, the developer portal and made it so that it can take in APIs or Swagger files from, from any platform. So you, you, you can publish uh, Swagger files and we can share your APIs regardless on where they're from. And we're also building things so they in, in, in their turn can actually share it with their customers. So they can have their own space in the uh, developer portal and they can actually share uh, APIs with their customers. So we have different layers in, and the possibilities for people to become kind of semi admins in their own space. And, and that's also been a huge success because that solves uh, struggles which people often come up with very late in, in their building and seeing that, okay, we need to do something about this. And then when we benchmark ourselves, we see ourselves as an internal sauce offering. So now we have Apogee, uh, which has been really good, uh, but we benchmark ourselves against, you know, AWS or Azure. So we should be as good as they are. So when people come and look for a solution, we should say, okay, you can go to AWS, but we are actually better. And here is the reasons why. So if we look at more than Apigee, uh, we have started to provide you know, services around Apigee, which is very useful uh, for our developers. So if we look at some of the services, we have, for example, monitoring where it's actually possible for developer to custom build their monitoring. So you see we have different uh, places where you can do monitoring or you can have custom monitoring where you send emails or messages to, to everyone. Uh, we have security. So we always do some security screening of all the APIs on the platform, like HTTPS or authentication that that's turned on. And we're not really forcing it, but we're, whenever we see that all right, you're, you're missing this part of the security. We contact the team and ask them like, why do you have this? Uh, and that has been also one of those things because sometimes, well, they don't want authentication check and they don't need it because that's this kind of data, which is not, there's no requirement for that. So instead of forcing it, we're just asking them. 
uh, other interesting part is uh, hybrid. So that's one of these uh, bonus things which uh, Apigee provides. So we have now a, a hybrid solution as well. Uh, and that's actually great. In some cases, it's really important with low latency. And with Apigee Hybrid, you can then uh, install uh, your own uh, Apigee solution uh, and run it on any yeah, uh, Kubernetes platform uh, and put it up there and you have your own little Apigee solution. Uh, and that's really nice because then we now have two solutions and they still look the same. And the user knows, you know, you can be in one for one API and then on the other for the other one. And the, the management is the, st the same. So uh, I think building these services has been really a success for us. And we're constantly improving this. And we, we're coming up with new ones to make life easier for developers and making it easy to share. So I think of, think about the developers as your customers and, and how do you make life easier for them. And if you do so, well, uh, hopefully uh, you'll have success and, and have a lot of developers coming to you using your platform. Thank you very much.